If you remove God from the picture, it'll change everything and those changes won't be good. Hello, I'm Phil Sanders and this is a Bible study in search of the Lord's way. Stay with us as we talk about living without God. In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has the way. We believe that the Bible is the revelation of His way. We invite you to join us in Search of the Lord's Way with Phil Sanders. Welcome to In Search of the Lord's Way. We're here to search the Scriptures for God's teaching and His wisdom. We all need to know God, what He's done, His will, His plans for the future, and His plans include you and me. One day we'll give an account to Him even if we don't believe in Him. We can deny Him, but God cannot deny Himself. Thanks for taking time with us today. We want to hear from you and we want to be a part of your life each week. In the 19th century, Friedrich Nietzsche, the German philosopher and cultural critic, said, God is dead. Well, to him, God remains dead. And he says, And we have killed him, yet his shadow still looms. How shall we comfort ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned has bled to death under our knives? Who will wipe this blood off of us? What water is there for us to clean ourselves? Well, Nietzsche was not so much saying God doesn't exist as he was saying that society had treated him as if he were dead. Nietzsche lost his faith, but God isn't dead. Nietzsche merely banished him from his heart, and so have many today. When society thinks it can live without God, it ends up replacing His truth, His beauty, His morality, and His order with substitutes that cause confusion, disorder, emptiness, and immorality. There's good reason to know and to love and to serve God. 1 John 2, 15-17 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. We offer this study on living without God free. And if you'd like a printed copy of our study and live in the United States, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way. Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call our toll-free telephone number. That number is 1-800-321-8633. We also have materials free on our website at searchtv.org. The Edmond Church will now worship in song. We'll read from Ephesians 2, 11 to 13, and explore our need for God.
Our reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. And in this, he talks to them and reminds them of what life was like before they became Christians. He says, Therefore remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Isn't it wonderful that we have the hope that comes through Jesus Christ? Let's pray together. Father, we're thankful for what Jesus has done for us so that we could come to know you and to love you and to see the promises that you have prepared for us. Help us, Heavenly Father, always to be obedient to your will because we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Without God, people have nothing lasting, nothing pure, nothing holy, and nothing true. Jesus said in John 15, 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. That was true in the first century and it's true today. We have good in life because of God. If there were no God, we couldn't live. James 1.17 says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Every good thing we possess finds its source in God, who created this world with the design to meet our needs, air, plants, animals, water, sunlight, and the soil. Romans 1 and verse 20 says, For His invisible attributes, namely His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. Some reject God because God is absolute and teaches absolute truth with concepts and morals that cannot change. God's absolute nature provides order in our world. God's Word says in 1 Peter 1, 14 to 16, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as He who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. Without absolute truth, we're left with relative truth, and this causes confusion, uncertainty, and chaos. The scriptures point to an absolute God with absolute truth. Romans 11:33 to 36 says, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments and how inscrutable His ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been His counselor? Or who has given a gift to Him that He might be repaid? For from Him and through Him and to Him are all things." 
To Him be glory forever. Amen. Many arrogantly think that they are wiser than God, but our society is filled with falsehoods and confusion. The Oxford Dictionary's 2016 word of the year was post-truth. They explained that objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appeals to emotion and personal belief. For many emotions and assumptions manufacture what they believe rather than reality. Some no longer believe God revealed moral truth in Scripture, so they manufacture their own moral logic and justifications. Have you noticed how morally confused our society has become? Our society doesn't know when life begins, what marriage is, or what makes people male and female. When people stop fearing God, they feel free to lie. We've been inundated with lies, fake news, false charges, misrepresentations, and exaggerations to the point that we're confused and questioning everything from the news and the things that come from politicians. Thankfully, we have a source of spiritual truth in God and in Christ that cannot be changed or stopped. The Lord Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Titus 1 and verse 2 says the Father is the God who never lies. Hebrews 6, 18 says it's impossible for God to lie. God's honesty and integrity gives us a reason to place our trust in all that He says is true. Without God, society is left in moral confusion. When we no longer think God matters, we can't decide, of course, when life begins or what marriage is or whether a person is male or female. And the theory of evolution these days is actually beginning to fail. Much of what Darwin supposed in his theory has been shown false by the fossil record and by DNA. We know far more today than Darwin knew in 1859. Evolutionists assume but never have proved that non-living things gave rise to living matter in spontaneous generation. They assumed but never proved that a one-celled animal evolved into a multi-celled animal. They assumed but never proved that invertebrates, that is animals without a spine, gave rise to vertebrates, that is animals with a spine. They assumed but never proved that fish gave rise to amphibians, and amphibians gave rise to reptiles, and reptiles gave rise to birds and mammals. They assumed time allowed these things to happen, but there's no proof among the fossils of one linking to another. You see, without God, people assume that they are the result of unplanned and unintended events that have no reason or purpose for existing. The difference between a person who sees God's design in this universe and believes God created him for a purpose and a person who sees no design and has no reason for his existence is huge. One has a direction in life while the other just exists. When you disregard God, you must disregard His moral teaching. Without the moral teachings God provides, we would live in a tragic and disorderly world. According to the Pew Research Center, virtually no atheist turned to religion for guidance on questions of right and wrong. In fact, atheists have great difficulty establishing a basis for their moral lives. The Russian novelist, Fyodor Dostoevsky, has one of his characters say, if there is no God, then everything is permitted. Well, we pay attention to, to morals and our behavior because we know that we're accountable to God if we're Christians. Hebrews 4.13 says, And no creature is hidden from His, that is God's sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eye of Him to whom we must give an account. You know, when there's no accountability, there is no reason to remain moral. We must remember 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10, which says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he's done, whether good or bad. God's morality is wise and good because God is wise and good. He sees and knows everything about humanity, and He gave every commandment for our good. 
And so we can't thumb our nose at God's ways and not, and not pay an awful price for it. Moses saw the superiority of God's commandments in Deuteronomy 4, verses 6 to 8. Keep them and do them, he says, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who when they hear all these statutes will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon Him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Sadly, many nations have abandoned God's ways, thinking they have outgrown Him or know more than He does. They don't. Paul knew the condition of the pagan world when he was preaching the gospel in Ephesus. He wrote in Ephesians 4, 17 to 24, Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They're darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them due to their hardness of heart. They've become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that's not the way that you learned Christ, assuming that you've heard about Him and were taught in Him as truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Without God, there's no path to holiness and righteousness. There's only selfishness and impurity. When people rid themselves of God, they also rid themselves of hope. 1 Peter 1, 3-5 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He's caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, reserved or kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. God wants to bless us for all eternity. And He gives us living hope through Christ's resurrection. Now the resurrection of Jesus is no small matter. 1 Corinthians 15, 16-19 says, For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile, and you're still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But of course, God did raise the dead. He raised Christ, and in fact, He gives us hope. We have assurance because of what God has done for us. Romans 8, 11 says, If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. More than that, God's Word gives us hope that God will bless us with His people. Romans 15 and verse 4 says, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. God's help was given to Noah and his family, and he survived the flood. Moses had God's help, and he brought Israel out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea. Joshua conquered Palestine. David slew Goliath. Elijah raised the dead. Josiah restored the temple. Daniel revealed Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The three Hebrews survived the fiery furnace. Daniel came out of the lion's den. Ezra led the people back to Jerusalem. Nehemiah built the wall. And Jesus rose from the dead. I tell you, you cannot deny God's power and what it can do. In Christ, we not only can live forever, we have the best life now. Paul said in Philippians 1 verse 21, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Paul realized that Jesus came to give us an abundant life. And it's a life filled with the fruit of the Spirit. That's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Paul noted in Galatians 5, and 23 that against such things there is no law. 
the love and teaching of God leads us to our, our best life, our wisest and our strongest. You know, whenever you are a Christian, you have minds and hearts set on something better than selfishness, greed, and lust. Christians love because Christ loves. They serve because Christ served. They bless others because Christ blessed them. And in Christ, whatever is good and excellent multiplies. We should give thanks that we have a God who loves and cares for His people. The ancient pagan gods had little concern for the people. Their followers never thought they could grow close to their gods. They offered sacrifices to keep the pagan gods from getting angry and sending evil upon them. We often quote John 3, 16 and 17, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. God loved a world that could not save itself, an ungodly world that never gave Him a second thought, and a world that sinned against Him and was His enemy. And yet God, because of His great love and mercy, was willing to sacrifice His Son Jesus in spite of it all. No one, no one, no one will ever love you to the same extent that the Father and the Son love you. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, we pray that you will open our hearts and our eyes to see the great love that you have for us, a love that is beyond all comprehension, and that we may come to love you and to be obedient and to serve you. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. On May 23, 1939, the submarine Squalus sunk. Its crew sat helpless at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean off the shore of New Hampshire. The Squalus was 240 feet below the surface. Now, no one had ever attempted to rescue a submarine if it were more than 20 feet below the surface. And so the crew sent up smoke flares hoping to be found. Rescuers lowered a 10-ton diving bell several times and brought the 33 surviving members of the crew to safety. Not one of the 33 men said to their rescuers, Well, I'll think it over, or I'll wait for a more convenient time, or I'm in good condition as I am, or, well, there is too much to give up. No, each one instantly and gratefully accepted his opportunity opportunity to escape this sunken submarine. 
Sin puts your soul into just as much a helpless condition. You can't save yourself by your own doing. Without the Lord to rescue you from condemnation, you have no hope. And this is why it doesn't make sense to ignore or put off coming to the Lord Jesus for salvation. It also makes no sense to forsake the Lord Jesus and His teaching to live a sinful life. To be saved, you must believe and confess Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You must repent of your sins and turn to the Lord Jesus and you must be baptized or immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins. Now being saved means the Lord will remove the sins and make you His servant. The Lord will add you to His church. God will make you His child. God wants to save you, but you must let Him by obeying His instructions. What's preventing you from becoming a Christian or remaining faithful to Christ? Whatever it is, it's not worth it. We hope today's study about the importance of God in your life has stirred you to consider your soul and your eternity. If you live in the United States and want a free printed copy of this message, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083, or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org, or call the search office toll free at 1-800-321-8633. Now you can download these lessons or a newsletter online at our website, searchtv.org. You can also watch Search anytime on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel, Search TV Ministry. There's also a schedule of our programs and a map with the location of churches in your area on our website, searchtv.org. We also offer free Bible correspondence courses. Now, if you call or write us and ask us for one, don't worry, we're not here to get your money. We're here to help you get to heaven. Please get involved with the Church of Christ and if you're looking for a healthy biblical church home, we'll be happy to help you find one. We'll be back next week, Lord willing. So keep searching God's Word. Look into it and study it. And tell a friend about this program and tell them that you watch. As always, we say to you, God bless you and we love you from all of us at In Search of the Lord's Way.